Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a look at the graduated filter. The graduated filter is one of the tools in the tool well. It's the third tool from the right, or if you prefer, it's the fourth tool from the left, and the keyboard shortcut is the M key. M is in Mary. So you can hit the M key to turn on the tool, or simply click on it and it opens up. And you'll notice that it looks pretty much identical to the radial filter and the adjustment brush that we covered in our two previous videos. But the graduated filter is meant to mimic an actual graduated filter that you would put on your lens. And those of you familiar with those types of filters know that with them, you could like darken a sky or add color to a sky in a very natural way. And that is what you could do with this graduated filter, but in a virtual way. And to demonstrate, I'm going to take exposure all the way down and to tell you the truth usually when we apply the filter we will take exposure like way down just so we could see what we're doing then we'll come back in after we apply the filter and readjust exposure and all the other sliders to give us the effect we want to achieve now to apply the filter it's very easy the most common way to do it is just go to the journal area you want the graduation to be and click with your left mouse button and drag down. And you'll notice as I'm dragging down, we have this very dark part up top, and that is where 100% of the effect is being applied. So exposure at minus four stops is being applied 100% right there. Then between this top line and the middle line, it starts to graduate away. And I believe it's down to 75% when it goes between these two lines. Then from that middle line, to the bottom line, it graduates away even more from that 75% point all the way down to zero. So the effect is not being applied at all below that bottom line. Now, you'll notice when I applied the filter that when I clicked and dragged, that top line stayed exactly where it is and the other two lines moved. So as I'm dragging, that top line is staying put and the bottom two lines are moving. So we're making the graduated area larger as I drag down. A lot of times when we apply this filter, we like that center line to be in a very specific place, most often like right on the horizon. And it's kind of more, it's, excuse that, it's more difficult to determine where that will be when it's moving as you're dragging, meaning if I come up here and click and drag and I want that to be right there, maybe these lines now are too wide apart or something like that and I want better control of where this center line will end up. Well, to do that, hold the Alt or Option key in when you drag. It's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac. And let's say, for the sake of argument, I want that center line to be right there. So you could see it. That's why I'm doing it. There. So I'll hold that ultra option key in, click with my left mouse, left mouse button and drag. And now you'll see the center line stay still and the other two lines move out. So that is where you could, or a way you could apply the graduated filter so that center line is exactly where you need it. Now, if the center line isn't exactly where you need it, you can just come up here, grab the little button by clicking on it, or they call it a pin, and you could move it around. Also, you could readjust the lines, just hover over line, and your cursor turns into a little hand, and you could pull that top line in, and it brings the middle line with it as we're pulling it down. Or you could go to the bottom line, when the cursor turns into a little hand, click, and move that up so you could see that it moves the two lines the bottom line and the middle line up so that's a way you could kind of micro adjust the graduated filter now many times we like the graduated filter to be perfectly straight you'll notice as i was dragging it's tilting and stuff like that so you could bring it in from the corner 
You could bring it in from the side if you prefer, but often we want it to be perfectly horizontally straight. If you want to do that, hold the shift key in. And you'll notice when I'm holding the shift key in, if I'm moving around, it won't allow me to tilt it. It's staying perfectly straight. So that's another thing you could do to help you better apply the filter to your image. And you can, of course, use the combination of the shift key and the alt or option key. And it's again, it's alt if you have a PC, option if you have a Mac. So you could draw a perfectly straight line by holding those two keys in. That draws out from the middle. So remember, you could do that. I'm going to show you one little last trick or two little last tricks about drawing the line. The first one is you don't have to drag down. You could go right here, click, and drag up. That way you're putting the filter on upside down. So the effect that is being affected or the part of the image that is being affected is down here below. And so that allows you to put the graduated filters on in every direction, from the diagonal, from the top, from the bottom, whichever way you want. Now the other little trick I'm going to show you is you could use the graduated filter to apply an effect to the entire image at 100%. So you're not using actually the graduated part of the filter. Why you might want to do this is often you would go to the basic um, panel and do some adjustments. And let's say your image has really dark shadows and really bright highlights, so it has great dynamic range in the scene and your exposure latitude of your camera actually captured it. But Lightroom won't let you, let's say, open up shadows enough. You have shadows all the way opened up to 100 and it's still not enough. Well, what you could do is you could cheat with the graduated filter. Take the graduated filter and go to a, any corner. It doesn't matter. I'll go to this lower right-hand corner and I'm real close to the corner, as you could see. And I'm just going to click with the left mouse button and drag outside the image. Now you could see that in this case, I have exposure at minus four. It's getting applied everywhere, and it's not being applied in a graduated fashion. So that's how you could kind of double up some adjustments that are in your basic panel, these tone adjustments, specifically uh, exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. Use them up here to uh, double them up so you could you know, get this effect or get your image processed the way you need it to be. Now. That's how you would apply this filter. Now, some other little things as I show you and I apply the filter. This center, I call it a button. Um, Amazon actually calls it, or Amazon, I'm sorry, Adobe actually calls it a pin, an edit pin. And you can see that I could move it around, readjust everything by grabbing that pin. Also, if I hover over the pin, you'll see that the mask overlay shows up. That's that red that shows me where this effect is being applied or where the filter is being applied. I could also go down here in the toolbar and if you're not seeing this toolbar this is this little strip of real estate that's directly below the image. Hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key toggles the toolbar off and on. And you'll see there's a little checkbox over here. And we covered this in the previous videos. You could click on that and that will turn on the mask overlay automatically and leave it on until you click it off. A keyboard shortcut for that is you could hit the O key on your keyboard, O for overlay, and hit the O key and you'll turn it on. Hit the O key and you'll turn it off. Now, as far as the edit pin itself, you may have noticed that when I'm hovering over the image, it's showing. When I come off the image, it disappears. That's because in this little dropdown, I have the show edit pins to auto. That is what auto does. When I'm hovered over, it shows. When I'm off, it disappears. There's other choices. You could have it always display. So it's always there whether I'm on the image or not with the cursor. It's selected, meaning if I have more than one graduated filter, only the selected one will show. And finally, never. So it's not showing at all. That comes in handy if you're applying a second filter and you don't want Lightroom to think that you're adjusting the existing filter. So you want to apply a second one near this one. And you can see right now I've turned into this double arrow thing, which allows me to tilt the, the filter around. Well, what I'm trying to add one there, and that's happening. So I could go to this drop down and go to never, then I could add another filter. An easier way to do this is to hit the H key on your keyboard. The H key will hide 
the edit pin and overlay so that you could apply the second um, graduated filter and then you could hit the H key again and it will put it back in auto mode. So H key toggles it between auto and never. So that's an easy way you could do it. And again, you could come in here and micro adjust this one by grabbing that and tilting it, going up to the top one, grabbing it, and we can just readjust the existing one. So there's some how, you know, adjustments you could do with the actual graduated filter. Now for this image, the, I didn't do, first of all, I didn't do any processing at all. This is the raw file. So we're going to process it just with graduated filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the shadows on that bottom part. So I'm going to go down here to the shadow slider, move that up to 100. And I'm going to go right about here. And I want the center of my graduated filter to be right there, the center line. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in. Uh, again, it's Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, I have a Mac, so it's an Option key. I'm holding that in. I'm also going to hold in the Shift key, so I make it perfectly horizontal, and I'm going to click and drag up. And I want it just like that. That is perfect. So I opened up the shadows with a graduated filter. Easy peasy. Now, the sky is a little bright, so I'd like to add another filter for the sky. Now to do that, you'll notice up here where it says mask, we have new and edit. We're in edit mode right now. We're editing this current graduated filter. And we have brush. And we're going to cover the brush in a second. I'm going to click on new to get a new filter. And I'm going to take shadows and put those back at zero. And in this case, I'm going to take highlights and I'm going to pull those down. And then I'm going to hit the H key on my keyboard to hide this one. And then I'm just going to go right in here. And again, I want the center to be there. So I'm going to hold that Alt or Option key in again. And I'm going to hold the Shift key in again so it's perfectly horizontal. And I'm going to click and drag down. And you can see now when I'm hiding the overlay, I can't even see those lines when I'm applying the filter. So be aware of that. So we're just going to apply it like that. I'm going to hit the H key again to show our, our uh, graduated filters, our two. And there we are. Now I could come back in here and I could maybe add some clarity to the sky. I could add some saturation to the sky. I could then go and click on this one. See, when I hover over the other pin, I turn into that little hand. And if I hover long enough, the uh, mask overlay shows. But I'll click on it to make that the active one. You can see that one has shadows all the way down. And I could bring in, I could bring clarity up on that one and maybe add a little bit of contrast and add some saturation to that one as well. So there is a totally processed image done with just two graduated filters. So it's pretty simple to do. Now, I just want to show you some more some masking techniques. We covered these masking techniques in the previous videos, so I'm going to go relatively quickly. So I'm going to reset it so we got rid of both of our graduated filters, I click this little reset button here. So for this demonstration, we're going to be crazy and we're going to take exposure all the way down again. And I'm just going to click in the sky and drag down and pull it down just like that. Now you can see it applied the graduated filter in a graduated fashion, but it is affecting the buildings. So I need to mask it away from those buildings. Again, if you look where it says mask, we have new edit. We're editing this one. But we have a brush and we covered this just click on brush and the brush tool opens down here at the bottom we'll want to erase it from the building and we want to make sure that we're just erasing it from the building so i think auto mask might help and remember we covered auto mask in the when we talked about the adjustment brush and i'm going to get a brush that is the appropriate size to mask it away from this building and I could affect the brush size with the center click wheel of the mouse, or in my case, I'm using an Apple Magic Mouse. I just drag my finger on the mouse. Or you could use the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller. Right bracket key makes it larger. And then you could come in here and erase it from the building. And now, of course, it looks ridiculous. We, we're not planning on using this um, graduated filter with exposure down to minus four stops. Um, this is obviously just for demonstration purposes. So you could come in here and erase it from anywhere you don't want it. All right. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea. That's one way you could do it.
The other way you could do it is with the range mask. And my experience is the range mask doesn't work super great with skies. And you could go up down here and you could see it's currently off. We could put it on color and we get this um, eyedropper. So I click on the eyedropper and I could, let's say I want the blues in the mask. So I could click on the blue sky and you can see how it affected that. And that part's getting affected, just the blue skies. And of course it's affecting the clouds a little as well. But that's one way. And again, it, you have all the functionality of the color range mask in that if I click once, I applied that. I could hold the shift key in and add to the selection. So I could add there by clicking there. And you could click around and add more to it. Again, this looks horrible. I don't plan on ever doing this in real life. I'm just trying to demonstrate how this tool works. So we'll get rid of it totally. Also, with the color range mask, you could click on the eyedropper and select a larger area than just one click by left clicking and dragging and you could select like this whole area and that will help better apply your mask um, to the image. Finally the other one is the luminance uh, mask and then what you would do is you would use these uh, little sliders here to either relegate it more to the brighter tones or take this one and move it to the left to relegate it more to the darker tones. And then you could use this smoothness slider to try to smooth it out. Uh, so that's different ways you can mask out the gradient from where you don't want it or mask it in to where you want it. Now again, none of these, in my experience, work very well on landscape images that have expansive skies. They just don't work as well. You're better off painstakingly coming in with the brush and erasing the effect from where you don't want it. So again, very quickly, I'll um, apply what I want to apply to this image. I'm going to take highlights all the way down. I'm going to hold the shift key in so I draw a perfectly horizontal graduated filter and I'm going to hold the alt key in so I know that that middle line is going to be exactly where I click which is right there and I'll drag out from that point. And there is my graduated filter for the sky. There is before and there is after. And next I'm going to get a new one by clicking on new right here. I'm going to reset highlights. I'm going to open up shadows. And I'm going to go right about here. And I'm going to, I'm going to go right about there actually. And I'm going to hold that shift key in again and the alt option key in again. So I drag out right from there. And I drag the wrong way. So I'm going to delete it. Hold that shift, alt, and option, in, and drag up. There we go. And drag it to cover the buildings. And there is that. Now I could add some clarity to that. And I could add some contrast to that. And I could add some saturation to that. And then I could go to my other one for the sky, my other graduated filter. And I might want to add some clarity for that and some saturation for that. And there is my total, totally finished image done with just two graduated filters. So you get an idea of the power of the graduated filter and how you might want to apply it to your image. Uh, quite frankly, I got to admit, I don't use the graduated filter that much. I just don't find a super great need to use it. But a lot of people do and a lot of people love it. And I hope that all those little tricks I showed you help you better utilize the graduated filter in your workflow. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.